people will go for echinacea. But what that's doing is it's consistently overstimulating your immune system where all the mushrooms want to do is it wants to adapt to the body stresses. It wants to get it to that kind of cruise level. So Simon, we could, I think just chat for hours. We were chatting before the show all about mushrooms. We have a really shared common interest. Uh, mm. in this and the power of them. I'm so excited uh, to finally get you on. I know we've tried a few times uh, yes, and it hasn't ma'am. worked out. Um, but <laughs> yeah, a very, um, a very warm welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you. And, well, thank you for having me. I know it's taken a few times uh, to make this happen, but I'm very happy to be here and see the colour of your eyes. <laughs> and the colour of my pink jacket. <laughs> Well, it's, yeah, it's popping. <laughs> it's popping. It's a little bit brighter under the lights, I think, uh, for anyone watching. So let's get started because I think a lot of people, when they first think of mushrooms, they don't necessarily know the full distinction between medicinal mushrooms uh, and other types of mushrooms. But I know that yeah. you you have a very powerful story in terms of how you got into creating Dirty and the world of mushrooms so let's Mm. let's start there and then we can open up people's minds to this amazing world yeah well i I think well actually it's powerful in some capacity because it really relates to a wider um audience because it really started through burnout um about i say six years but seven seven and a half years ago naturally but um it was another business my brother and i had and um my brother and i have been We've worked together pretty much from day dot. We've always been interconnected. There's this unconditional kind of journey we've been on together. Um, but I won't go too much into the other business, but it, it, it really represents what others, I think, go through. The idea of always having your foot heavy on the pedal and ignoring these kind of chronic symptoms that kind of um, present themselves to you. Because I think it's easy for the body, if you want, to kind of suppress it. And uh, for a long time, we were doing we were doing that while we were building the business. The business was becoming a success, but so as much as we we're becoming a C over company, we weren't really becoming a C over own body. We were completely disregarding everything that was going on. So, you know, for in order for my brother and I to keep going, keep pushing the envelope in, in what we were doing, um, we would use these things like Red Bull to keep us awake and keep us wired, um, which inevitably led us into this sleep deprivation. And as a result of which that amplified into kind of a consistent idea of anxiety and uh, walking into a meeting room and, you know, falling into um, a panic attack with no reason. There was absolutely no reason. There was no bear or lion behind a, a sofa or anything. It, it was remarkable that we, we lost complete connection with mind and body. And uh, and actually, older than my brother, uh, if you see him, he's got a very biblical look. He's, uh, but he's definitely younger than me. He's beard and hair, and I'm everything, anything but that. But um, you know, seeing what he was going through as well, all these symptoms, um, and I felt as a success of failure because I didn't actually have the answers for what he was going through. And the only source that we had, our trusted source, was our GP. Um, and my experience with them was like they were almost a farm agent because they were just dishing us pills, subscribing us pills or, you know, even going to SSRIs and so forth. And I never, I never wanted to take that. I, I felt the, the, I always was taught the body does heal, but for some reason we were ignoring everything that was going on. Uh, um, and, you know, constant headaches and um, flus, common colds, skin was tired, everything, you know, I'd walk down through Oxford street and I'd always have my hood up and my hat down because I felt physically like so tired and fatigue and, uh, embarrassed by this look and so um but I was but that frustration drew me to look at different other integrated medicines that weren't actually being handed to me as an op- option by our GP um and obviously your GP is a trusted source but they just their their bandwidth of knowledge knowledge was incredibly limited so um looking at alternative therapies and you know acupuncture all this other stuff it just nothing was really working um but Remarkably, um, one day we were introduced to um, a tea master in West London, uh, which is incredibly random in itself, but there was a tea master who came over from um, the southern province of China for a couple of weeks, and she was hosting tea ceremonies, and a dear friend of ours said, look, I'm not going to tell you much, but I can just tell you that this is going to be incredibly profound. When someone says they're doing a mushroom tea ceremony, the one thing I uh, anticipated so did my brother was that we were going to go on some sort of psychedelic kind of journey we're going to crack the door open and go into this mystical world for a minute or two um so there you go the first the first engagement was the misconception um but we went to this incredible apartment and it was all about based on set and setting and the whole 
the, the apartment was like dim lit and it was shrouded in uh, Palo Santo. And uh, she was there and there were these cushions in a circle and we sat down and she sat with us cross-legged for about two to three hours. And it was even before drinking, it was mind bending because she presented these teas, these powders in these bowls and they were powders, first of all, because you know, I anticipated she's gonna hand us a mushroom, we we're gonna chop it up or something. And um, each one of these mushrooms had the most profound stories. And, um, and the way that she would hand us these teas and then you should boil the water, she'd hand them over as a sacrament and she would be incredibly uh, serious about each mushroom. So she would, she would have these narratives that were steeped heavily in thousands of years of history and ancestral stories. And, and those stories were kind of complemented by these peer reviewed papers and uh, each one had these incredible healing properties. And um, so inside these mushrooms and the fruit in body of the mushrooms is packed full of all these nutrients, dense nutrients and minerals. and that uh, and compounds that we as humans kind of require because most of which we may be deficient in such as um, magnesium and zinc and so forth and but each one of these mushrooms had um, a, a compound which would engage in the mind and the body in very different ways so for example the first one I always remember she handed me was a lion's mane and actually if you look it up you'll see it's it's the most stunning mushroom that is hidden in the old growth forest and they grow in damp dark conditions um, and they're beautiful. It's like nature's art. It, it looks like a mane of a lion, which is why they call it lion's mane. And like, for example, in that lion's mane is a compound called aranesines, and it's a compound so light enough it can break through the brain blood barrier and, uh, and activate the stimulation of the growth of new brain cells. Uh, as a result of which, increasing um, memory, focus, concentration, suppresses anxiety. Uh, everything she was sharing with me, I just, it, I didn't believe, no, I didn't believe it, but we were, I was never taught about this. And and if truth be told, when I grew up, you know, the authority figures around us would always point violently at a mushroom telling you not to touch it because it's poisonous and, um, and it will kill you and they'll send you on a mystical journey. Uh, Nora's really telling us about the, this other side about mushrooms. And um, so with every mushroom she handed to us, we would receive them as a sacrament. And I say a bowl because it was almost like drawing water from the river so everything was done consciously and we had this amazing music and um and we drank it and uh, slowly uh, each one each mushroom and um they we had a very visceral feeling that night from the experience maybe placebo was kicking in but it's not to kind of dismiss or, or uh, have a negative connotation with placebo i think it's a great thing to have and it's amazing how the body uh, can shift its, its chemistry to improve the well-being and um after two or three hours of being there, my brother and I left that tea ceremony. We lived in East London that time. We walked from west to east because we couldn't believe this feeling we felt. And we actually took about uh, two or three weeks supply of her mushrooms uh, with us because we were saying, well, well, listen, we've been trying everything and anything. So for about um, yeah, two, three weeks, we actually found a way to kind of bring these mushroom teas into our kind of lifestyle from sunrise to sunset. So in the morning, we would have um, chaga. And I can go through the benefits in a minute, but, um, um, and then before going to work, we would have a lion's mane. Um, before going to the gym, we would have uh, cordyceps mushrooms. And then before bed, we'd have um, the queen of mushrooms, reishi, which is one of the most researched mushrooms in the world. And over that couple of weeks period, everything shifted. Um, our sleep was on point. We became sleep champions. We felt because we got it back. It was a, you know, just to get sleep back. It's, it's, it was the, the, the greatest feeling because I never woke with a clear mind and I woke with a clear mind. You know, I didn't have any brain fog. Um, and my brother and I were so spellbinded by this experience. We actually never saw the tea master again. She was an ephemeral experience to us. But then after that experience, we started to kind of delve into more research um, for what she was sharing to us. And the mushrooms are decorated in about three or four decades of research. Um, and we were like shocked that nothing, no one ever knew about this. So what we did is every Friday evening, we replicated the tea ceremony she did. So for every Friday evening from seven o'clock onwards, we had about 10, 15 of our friends, all within different industries, anything from philosophers, artists, content creators, chef, and all of them were stressed. So it was a great time to do this on a Friday to see if this is placebo or does this actually work? And every Friday evening, we sit down, um, Palisantos would be shrouded around the room, dim light, uh, we'd curate amazing music, and we'd sit, we'd talk, we'd share our knowledge of these mushrooms, we'd share the misconception, the misconception around mushrooms, and start to retell the, the narrative of mushrooms, because um, one of the most extraordinary things is to take into consideration is, for example, we share more in common with mushrooms than we do plants, 
uh, which share around 54% DNA with, uh, with fungi, which um, it blows my mind. But then when you, when you uh, look at how they heal us as much as they're healing the future um, well, health of the planet, it's, it's an amazing symbiosis we share with nature. Um, and then after that, we, um, our friends would, who were going through certain experiences themselves, such as depression, their um, stress, migraines, um, everything, that they would be lifted. And, and what yeah. happened with your brother in terms of when you started this protocol and mm. you were doing the kind of morning to night, did his mm. panic attacks then completely sort of fall away? Yeah, we both were experiencing these same symptoms. So both but of you us. both had them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it was it was really my, my I would say my success and failure because I was going through the same thing as my brother. And actually being the older brother, I didn't want to share that I had that, but I maybe I could fire the answers, but I didn't even have the answers. So um, we were both experiencing the same healing um as each other so the panic attacks were going within a couple of weeks the um anxiety just disappeared um and it, we almost became the sea of our own body once more and it was a light bulb moment when our friends and our family were reaping the same benefits we were we were like well one minute this, uh, there's something profound here we felt like we had a remit we had a responsibility to kind of propagate the goodness and change the misconception around mushrooms and bring mushrooms to the mass like if it can heal us it can heal anyone uh, and when you look into the research you look beyond our interconnection with them looking at how much they heal us uh, we wanted to kind of change the narrative around mushrooms um, which is why we started uh, dirty and, uh, and and I mean I love them I think they're amazing and I think the research when you're talking there about lion's mane it excites mm. me as well because you know, where it can help you produce more things like more nerve growth factor in the brain is mm. it's very powerful in terms of the research that's going on in relation to things like Alzheimer's, right? Which for mm. me, you know, when um, I've looked at my genetics and I carry a copy of APOE4, that's something that I really want to kind of hang on to, you know, hold on to my smarts. And I think I do notice the difference as well in terms of how powerful it is on its own but, and sometimes in combination with other nootropics. Um, yes with what i'm did i'm curious how did the name dirty arrive <laughs> <laughs> um actually my mother was involved in this conversation my brother and i were sitting in our apartment um we we're trying to find something provocative something that starts a conversation um there's you know in the industry of wellness there's all these kind of pristine white looking um pharmaceutical looking kind of products that are trying to be lifestyle and they use very obvious names but a lot of those names are very scientific so you're already kind of dismissing a market you want to engage with and you know, dirty. I mean, mushrooms are from the dirt. Um, yeah, they are. Yeah, I think I think you were going to share a discount code, dirty and. <laughs> yeah, 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 we dirty, yeah, about. yeah, dirty and. Um, <laughs> it's a name that probably people will know, and uh, maybe it may even change uh, your name on the streets. People will probably be calling a dirty and out. Um, <laughs> Uh, and they were teased and we're like we're putting it together but also it's it's a name that 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 can be used in so many different conversations it's an icebreaker first of all but also uh people are already curious about mushrooms so having a name like dirty it just allows for a, um, a gentle conversation we don't want to be scientific in anything we're doing we just merely we're on a mission to share and uh dirty became a, a name that kind of gelled well and, and every time we were using it at the very beginning everyone uh, loved the name and uh, we, we kept it. It was, and it's a name that we can be used in different areas. I mean, we were talking offline um, because we do, you know, the, the, the company now, Dirty, has actually created a, 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 a stunning community of curiosity. Um, so we're not just a transactional company in any capacity at all. You know, the, the real heartbeat of Dirty is the community because people are reaping the benefits. Um, and what I want to, do what my brother and I want to do is bring this community together into a physical space. I think in one capacity, I, I, I do honestly believe that we've lost the essence of a community, yet it's something we, we long for to, 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 to be connected in a physical capacity. So um, we created something called the Dirty Tribe. And the Dirty Tribe is a community of dirty lovers um, or anyone curious around mushrooms. And we do these different kind of um, experiences to improve mind and body mushroom almost becomes it's almost personified so it's like the the fireplace it's the it's the, the one thing that brings us together and, and the storytelling concept around the fireplace and it's an excuse to look at other alternative therapies we can do to improve mind and body and most of those are natural so uh the tribe at the moment for the last six months we meet at the serpentine lake um 6 30 in the morning between 6 37 in the morning uh, we're doing it at that time because that's as the summer is rising 
and um, we have an amazing breathwork master, the d dirty breathwork master. See, I'm seeing, we're seeing how many times we can use dirty in, in different kind of uh, territories and it works. No one has challenged us on it. It does work, it works very well. Yeah. Um, and, and we, we meet, we do breathwork by the, the lake. Uh, we drink a tea. Um, we sometimes start with, um, with lion's mane because it does reduce anxiety as well. And when you're stepping into uncharted territory, uh, the body can go in a bit of a, a fight or flight, uh, put in that sympathetic kind of state of mind. And certainly when the lake is um, between zero and four degrees, which is what we started with, um, we would all kind of interrogate the fear of the cold as one. And that's quite an amazing thing to kind of, um, you know, win the first battle with uh, pretty much people who are just generally strangers. They would never met each other, which I love. Um, and um, it's a nice experience to bring people together. And, you know, we swim and in, in most cases, even most recently, uh, we go beyond the light of serpentine. We go into nature's territory. So we're actually swimming with the swans, the herons, um, and, and they swim. They actually glide past us. And the, the most the most amazing thing is when we, we reach the bridge, which is about 300 meters, you turn around and the sun, the, the rare as it is, the sun bleeds through the trees onto the lake, onto the body. And it just, it's such a nice symbiotic kind of relationship. You feel this connection we have with nature. Not to say this is, a, 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 let's go and hug a tree or anything, but it's just a nice kind of way to bring in the mornings. And then we, we swim and then we come back to the, uh, onto the bank side of the serpentine. We drink some more kind of tea and, and we disappear and we get on our nine to five. But for that moment, that effable moment to kind of bring a community together, it has shifted the mindset of many uh, uh, to the point where uh, um, some of the community are going through their own personal things and they feel this is the one thing that kind of gives them strength. And for me, that's everything. What an amazing, amazing thing you've created there. Let's talk mm. then about how to prepare these, because I think this is where people maybe don't have enough information, right, in terms of how you should make it more of a ceremonious occasion in terms of mm -hmm. drinking these mushroom yeah. teas so because um we we live such busy lives right and i think often anything that really is improving mental function for example and capacity we're almost inclined to do it quickly right because we think oh it's, it's a performance hack we can make it quicker but at, what i love there is what you're sharing in terms of this slowing time down a little bit and actually savoring and mindfully enjoying mm -hmm. that moment with the ceremonies in the morning and both the ones that you had in your apartment in the evening for something mm. like, let's start with lion's mane. It's one that a lot of people have heard of, and it is actually a beautiful looking mushroom. I, I love it when I when I look at lion's mane. Um, what's the best way to to make this that you found? Have you got a recipe? Mm -hmm. How should it be drunk slowly? How quickly should people feel the effects? Well, um, it's a great question. There's a ten, by the way. I'm about to just launch the our logo right there on the top. Love it. Love <laughs> uh, it. Just, uh, interestingly enough, lion's mane is is. Is a, is a nice taste and it, it resonates perfectly to the westernized tongue. It's a relatable taste. Yeah. Um, one thing I should say is that they're powders. So we extract them, we have a dual extraction process which allows us to kind of break into the fruiting body of, uh, of the mushroom. Because in the fruiting body of the mushroom is a cell wall, which is called chitin. And chitin is a very strong, resilient wall. It's the same cell wall you'd find on lobster. So to digest that as a human, you just couldn't do it. So in order to get all the goodness, the beta glucans, which kind of exposes the polysaccharides and uh, other nutrients and minerals in there, uh, you have to go through this process of boiling hot water and alcohol. The, the ratio between the two allows the, um, the cell wall to melt down and expose the potency of these kind of compounds. And then we spray dry it. So then it becomes a mushroom into powder and the compounds are all activated within that powder. And it's, we're not doing, we're not shifting behavior in any capacity at all. It's literally, you take a spoon and uh, you put it in, in, a, in a cup. And because of our extraction process, I would say globally, we're probably the most purest and potent because of the extraction process we've used has been mastered over many years and the technology we use has been uh, exponentially grown. And um, the moment you put it into uh, your cup and you put, uh, I would say between 80, and 85 degrees, not, not boiling, but it, the same temperature I think you would use for green tea. Um, it's so aqua soluble, you won't, don't really need to stir it. And I love that. Uh, and when I say we're not forcing behavior, we're basically you're just elevating your morning ritual, for example. So you can add this to anything. So you can add it to coffee, you can add it to your protein shake. It doesn't, it may change the taste, but it doesn't change the efficacy. Um, but with lion's mane, for example, because of everything you just shared with like nerve growth factor, the fact that it will stimulate the growth of brain cells and the hippocampus, the thinking part of the mind, 
And every, every time I talk about it, everyone says, oh, I need that one. I need more brain cells. Um, but um, the idea of it's such a simplistic kind of idea of not changing anything. You can add it to your coffee. Um, it really does get into the circulatory system quick. As a powder, it really does work uh, remarkably well. Um, so, but interestingly enough, uh, the taste, I should say, the taste, the notes we always get is a very miso taste uh, note or also chocolatey caramel. So it really works remarkably well. We don't add anything else. It's purely the fruiting body of the mushroom. And is um, there any downside to when you, when you, sorry to interrupt there, but when, you, when you're pouring water on it, mm -hmm. if the water is boiling, so for example, like if you're preparing matcha tea, Mm -hmm. Like and I, and I think a lot of people don't know this, but actually the 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 matcha powder dissolves better in cool water. So I'd often yeah. mix that powder in and then add not boiling water because that destroys a lot of the antioxidants. And you want to use a bamboo whisk, for example, so that you're preserving that right, and not oxidizing things. Mm. What about with the lion's mane? Do we need to kind of be careful with that in the preparation or not? Yeah, yeah. Don't have to use a bamboo whisk, even though that's a that's a fun experience with matcha, but. Um... Yeah, you, yeah. Um, not to uh, not to boil it. Uh, I would say because when I say green tea, because I know when I've been some places else for green tea, they give you boiling water and green tea. You're basically having burnt toast. It's it's just not going to do what it's supposed to do. So yeah, I, I would say between eighty and eighty five degrees really allows the compounds to be activated and and work into the circulatory system quick as well. Um, so um, another thing, actually, another um, advantage, another benefit, which is important, we were talking offline about this, is um, cognitive dysfunction, the early stages of dementia. There's some amazing studies that supports um, um, the repair of nerve damage. And um, some of the studies will show that those in early stages of cognitive dysfunction by taking, by drinking two grams of a lion's mane a day, which is actually our serving, uh, improves cognitive function and reverses some of these symptoms that people get from dementia in the early, early stages. Um, for me, like how could something so healing be dismissed for so many years, which is another reason our mission is, is, um, is unquestionable. And um, the one thing I should say with what we've done, we've created a lifestyle. So like a juxtaposition between lifestyle and fashion, our brand, because it looks so good. And I should say, sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't rather me saying that, but this is, there you go. That's how, how it looks. So that, uh, I should, I'm going to get you one of these, by the way. It's the, it's the uh, Welcome to the Dirty World uh, um, wooden display. Uh, and yes, the colours, awesome. the colours, now let me just say, sorry, I've done this completely wrong. Sorry, let me just really quickly for you because it's important. So the reason I, we did these colours is also based on sunrise to sunset, the way we took it. So, uh, you know, as the sun rises, you know, having this orange, and this is the way we actually take it. So, do you want me to go through it, actually? Is that, yeah, let's that go help? through this, because I think this would really help people. Okay. okay so, so, and, then, and I'll be very brief on, on the benefits. So chaga, which is, is for some reason, it's, it's sending out so quick. So chaga is, has the highest source of antioxidants compared to anything else that Mother Nature has to offer. So like one cup of this in your, one teaspoon in a cup is the equivalent of 600 blueberries. Uh, there's an orc chart that will actually show you the, the concentration of uh, the antioxidants in chaga. Also has a high uh, concentration of melanin, uh, which is absolutely amazing. And if you see the studies based on those who have skin challenges, whether it be psoriasis, eczema, um, or just tired skin, uh, this can reverse this. And, and, and a lot of our customers over the like four or five weeks have seen a, a complete reverse uh, in tired skin to glowing skin, to psoriasis, to no psoriasis. And, and I can only attest to that from the feedback from the customers, but also if you look at some of the peer review papers and all the peer review papers come from a website called mushroomreference.com uh, and also the NCPI and PubMed, but mushroomreference.com was created um, by Larry Page as a domain name because there's so many studies and they filter all the studies depending on the mushroom you, you wanna look into. Because there's, there's, there's many, many um, edible mushrooms and there's probably a small percentage of being given the uh, research that people should really look into. Um, so the reason this is in, in the morning is because uh, your immune system sometimes can be compromised so uh, what, um, what chaga does, a bit like the other mushrooms, but very much chaga, it upregulates your immune system, never overstimulates. So when you, know, when you get the common cold or anything, your immune system is compromised, people will go for echinacea. But what that's doing is it's consistently overstimulating your immune system where all the mushrooms wanna do is it wants to adapt to the body stresses. It wants to get it to that kind of cruise level. And uh, chaga does that. It's actually also a very earthy kind of taste. It's a very dark looking powder, but don't be uh, fooled by what it looks like. It really is a nice to have on its own. 
Um, so having that in the morning is incredible. And well, chaga, really interestingly, my, I was giving chaga to my husband, yeah. chaga with the reishi. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you what's really interesting is that we saw uh, an improvement when you were just talking there, things like psoriasis and autoimmune, we saw an improvement in his Graves' disease. Really? Yes. Okay. It's really understand. interesting. So a first-hand experience, actually. And he feels like the anxiety moderates, but also... Uh, like his need for meds is much less when he's taking chaga and reishi and actually is almost transitioning off that now okay that's incredible um some more research to do there um, yeah really interesting and well um there's anything else i mean it also has a high constant you know there's a lot of minerals that are, unfortunately in some capacity we're deficient in uh, I should say mushrooms are the only non-animal species that secretes uh, vitamin d so even putting uh, mushrooms under uv light uh, for like five, 10 minutes, it just kind of, it just proliferates the amount of vitamin D, yeah, which I, is, I is, is, is just incredible. Um, so you'd have the chaga first, right? So we're starting here. Chaga would be something that's a nice thing. What Could you have it like sunrise when you're meditating or that yeah. kind of, yeah? Okay. Yeah, actually, it actually, uh, actually complements what you were saying, where time is an enemy and this kind of white noise kind of uh, yeah. intensity that we have in the concrete jungle of uh, Western society. Adding this in the morning just allows you to kind of really ha allow time to become a comrade um but also it doesn't stop the idea of adding this into anything that you do have in the morning um our, our thing is have it on its own but all we want you to do is have just just steep into these mushrooms they they really do perform like incredible kind of benefits for you um and then 11 o'clock or maybe slightly before if i'm going into some intense work or studies or you know uh, writing up a talk or podcast whatever it may be um lines me because based on talking about neuro growth factor uh, and the benefits on cognitive function is an increase in focus um, and an increase in memory recall, which a lot of my friends felt that they were um, failing in. in. Um, now, what was the other reason I was going to say about uh, lion's mane? Uh, something that you brought up. But in any case, this is, uh, oh yes, it was, so it's, there are some studies and I should look more into this and share with you, but I can tell you from so custom experiences, that uh, there's one mother in particular whose son has ADHD and she's been giving her son for a lot. It was like a four to six week um, lion's mane and um, she has been winning off the SSRIs. So I believe that's Ritual. Sorry, that's, I can't even think the name of the, um, the SSRIs he would have been on, uh, but Adderall was one. Anyway, so he's weaned off them because lion's mane is, is giving him that sense of uh, focus and concentration and calming him down. Um, I should say there's no sedatives, no caffeines in any of this, it's purely the mushroom. Uh, cordyceps, which I know is Davinia Taylor's favorite one, which we were talking about the other day on stage with her. Now, uh, um, cordyceps has a compound uh, in this called cordycepin, which basically act activates the production of more ATP. Um, it also increases uh, oxygen into your lungs and also into your muscles. So should you be going on a, a long run or a, an endurance training, some capacity running, swimming, biking, whatever it may, may be, you can go beyond your VO2 max. You can actually nail your PB and the, re the response has been amazing. Uh, and there's a lot of studies and case studies uh, that um, proves uh, the, the position of cordyceps. There's actually a study that was based in China in 1993, where uh, the, the Olympic team in China were nailing their PB. They were, they were getting so many golds in, in, in fields they were never actually achieving. And it was down to cordyceps, but they were disqualified because no one actually recognized cordyceps as a superfood, for example, it was seen as uh, they were cheating. Um, so cordyceps really good. Also for libido, the, uh, the studies on this has been incredibly, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, we were actually put, so we were actually how long before, like in terms of well, when you say libido, right? Here we're talking about oh. like more drive and desire. Does it increase performance as well? Or yes, both. Yeah, both. Okay. Both. Yeah, yeah. So um yeah, yeah, it's incredible. And um I should say there's about uh, 70 different species of cordyceps, and the one we've got is militaries, and there's other ones which um basically um dive into the host of a, of a parasite being an, an ant or an insect and they use the 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 brain of the ant to kind of a sprout out a cordyceps but that's a different cordyceps because some people get um uh the wrong idea of what which cordyceps we have and that's a very expensive one as well um then you have reishi which i saying before is the queen of mushrooms is probably one of the most researched mushrooms in the world and it has about 270 odd compounds, maybe more now uh, that have been discovered. But one compound um, 
is that this mushroom has actually calms the nervous system down. And the studies will show how it improves uh, your sleep cycle, mostly your deep sleep. And the interesting thing about this, this is the mushroom actually allow my brother and I to kind of step away from insomnia and uh, find our sleep once more. And when we were speaking offline, this taste is kind of bitter and that bitterness is the compound. Um, but for thousands of years, going back to the Tao dynasty, this mushroom was seen as a, as a sacred offering from the gods because some of the great leaders would uh, use this before going to war and it would calm them down before going to war. Um, and if every, any nobleman was seen with a reishi back then, they would be killed instantaneously. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and also some of the great leaders would uh, adorn the look and the feel of the, the, the reishi mushrooms is a beautiful looking mushroom onto their cloaks. It would be seen as sculptures, it's in hieroglyphics. It's just a remarkable uh, mushroom. And it's actually taken science to help us to rediscover what our ancestors were doing and tribes were doing so many thousands of years ago. Um, also, if you have hay fever, because I, now I haven't, a hay, I haven't yeah. had hay fever for about five years. And so uh, what reishi also does, it kind of suppresses your the arousal of your histamine levels. So any, anytime you get microinflammation and so forth, I'd always recommend using reishi. Uh, for some reason, pollen, I don't know what the reason is that it arouses your histamine levels, but uh, reishi suppresses it. So this is a great kind of weapon of choice if you don't want to get hay fever this summer. Um, so also those are the suppressing four. the histamine reaction, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting, isn't it? Which is actually makes that then a good choice as well for many reasons then for sort of perimenopausal women, because often they get this um, histamine uh, triggering this histamine intolerance that's triggered around that time because of the interplay with with the female sex hormones um, and they're getting disrupted sleep and poorer quality deep sleep which then in turn that combined with the drop off in progesterone is increasing anxiety levels so this this would be uh very much applicable to sort of women who are listening in their late in their late 40s for helping with many of those things i'm gonna have to dive into the studies a bit here simon that's very interesting yeah, this, I'll send you the link for all those studies. I didn't know about that. That's amazing. Um, so, and, and then the um, the interesting thing with these mushrooms is that uh, people, so the simplicity, I should say, is literally one teaspoon, which is two grams, into hot water, 80, 80 85 degrees, stir it, and, and just steep in it and just uh, be conscious when you're drinking it because it really is remarkable. But um, And uh, how much water for that kind of optimal experience, how much water would you be putting alongside two grams? Is that, would that be a small cup? Do you make it into a long drink? What's your, how should preference. you drink? Eight ounces, I think it usually is. is eight ounces. Like. Okay, so a fairly long one, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, that's my line's name, the, the end of it. Um, and so what we, what my brother and I have been doing is that we, we, we're very kind of intimate with our, our community. We want to see how they're kind of responding to it and what more we can do to kind of help elevate their, their routines or their days. So they're not, uh, so they're nailing their nine to five, rather uh, falling into these kind of states of kind of being feeling fatigue. And I'd say actually, um, as COVID is concerned, those who've had long COVID and, and one of the symptoms of long COVID being uh, the fatigue, uh, cordyceps has uh, completely reversed it for a lot of our customers so I would there's some amazing studies on this about on the energy mm. and, and again when I say slow drop of energy there is absolutely no kind of uh, uh, fall down at all it's, there's no it's not like a caffeine kick or anything it's just a feeling you get of uh, feeling more energy which is it, it's incredible and um, so uh, how and long so before actually, that exercise would you recommend someone taking the cordyceps um, I usually do it before like 45 minutes before workout or half an hour before workout, but that's over time of me drinking it. I would say that because uh, you were asking before, like, you know, how long does it take before you, you start to reap the benefits, for example? And it's very different depending on the, the, the human body. Uh, everyone's very different, tailored differently. So um, I would say, you know, taking these over a period of like a week to two weeks, you'll start to kind of uh, see these incremental kind of changes. The most important thing to note, which I found, is that in Western society, we kind of want a quick fix. Mm. which is why I think the caffeine kick is a big thing but you know the westernized pill can suppress these kind of uh, issues and so forth but um this is about consistency a lot of the studies will show that um certainly with lion's mane we spoke about menopause there was a study done uh, a clinical study done a blind placebo sorry that was done which was based on um women in their 40s there were 30 women and it was done on a four-week um study where they would have a lion's mane cookie. So they had two grams dusted on a cookie. So they'd have a cookie every day. And um, the idea was that 
the symptoms from hot flushes, anxiety and depression would just slowly but surely disappear entirely. The moment that they stop taking the lion's mane cookie, the symptoms present themselves to them again. So consistency is important. Mm -hmm. So which is why we've done 30 days, 30 day servings of each one. Uh, yeah, so you can kind of like you effectively having one of each a day. But my understanding as well is that mushrooms contrary to things like adaptogen, the way they obviously work in an adaptogenic way in the body, but they're different than herbs, which can be very stimulating and powerful. Mushrooms don't seem to have a sort of almost an upper limit to what you can take is, is my yeah. understanding. Yeah, you can't OD on mushrooms, I can tell you that. Mm. <laughs> which, is a good, um, yeah, which is a really good thing, because with, with herbs, you know, you can. It's... Yeah, I mean, I don't know too much, of, uh, too much about in, into the Ayurvedic kind of area, uh, one thing that we do is that we uh, on our blends and the reason we did blends because people were really enjoying it and adding it to their coffee so my brother and I went out and actually went to find the the purest most sustainable and traceable uh, instant coffee we can find because if you infuse mushrooms into an instant coffee uh, like I was saying before you still get the efficacy you just the taste might be different but we added maca for digestion and ashwagandha for uh, the reduction in calmness um, and that's our dirty mushroom coffee. We had three of the mushrooms being lion's mane, uh, cordyceps and chaga. And um, I'd probably say at the moment that's been becoming one of our best sellers now. It's probably taking so this over. Is, sorry, cover. this is cacao with maca. And oh, no, no, sorry, no, it's, it's coffee, sorry. Coffee. Uh, it's yeah. instant coffee. Uh, with three of them, our mushrooms, chaga, cordyceps and um, lion's mane. And we had ashwagandha and maca into that. And it's a nice, it's a really lovely experience. And the reason we've done that is because um, it's the only, and there's a few of these coffees out in the market, but we feel the only one that really does, gives you no jitters, no crashes at all because of this absolute addiction to coffee uh, globally. Um, it's, it's amazing that what uh, the, our mushroom coffee is doing for those who have three or four of the coffees and they won't actually, it, they won't have that afternoon lull or anything. Um, so that coffee is done you know, really well. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, so that that's... again, the ashwagandha, you were talking mm. there about menopause of women, that also helps with hot flushes and maca mm. also helps to support, uh, certainly in the early stages of, 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 of perimenopause, what I found is that maca is very good at supporting progesterone levels. Um, okay, that's yeah. incredible. So that's really interesting. Yeah, um, we have a very high number i would say there's more women buying our products than men uh and what i'm learning from this i need to take a deeper dive into um how some of these um certainly these uh, the ayurvedic herbs and the mushrooms are supporting uh, menopausal symptoms mm. uh, which is incredible and i learned a lot from davinia taylor the other day when she was on stage talking about that as well so there's a lot there's a lot more to learn but you'll see when you see some of these peer-reviewed papers which are just outstanding there are so many studies supporting uh, the, the the power, the healing power of these mushrooms. Um, and you have also... another blend, do you not, with raw cacao? Yes, it's a Peruvian cacao, organic and uh, ceremonial cacao that um, my brother and I found after many months. Um, and that cacao is, we've infused that with reishi and we also add lacuma, cinnamon, ashwagandha and uh, coconut milk powder. And the combination of all of that. <laughs> I'm going to try this one. I'm going on. <laughs> <I saw> this. <laughs> um, the combination of all of that as one is like a warm hug at night, and it doesn't spike your sugar levels. Right. And the reason we did that because, like your feedback, you're saying is that you like the ratio. It does perform what it says it does, but the taste is very, or not very bitter, but has a bitterness to it, which is um, is a strange to the westernized tongue. Um, and adding that into your the concoction um a lot of our clients are just or customers or community i should say are, are experiencing better sleep more calm um so the yeah the the dirty cacao is done really well i love the color as well it's uh, it's a purple that pops really well um so the risk the reaction to that has been amazing and i should say does the repetition like the mission really is to see how many more people we can get hooked onto our mushrooms it's really about bringing mushrooms to the mass retelling the narrative um fungi is its own kingdom and i think it was in the 1960s that it was it got reclaimed it, it, it had its own kingdom because people were unsure where do you put mushrooms is it a vegetable is it fruit where does it go but uh, 5.1 million species of, of fungi exist today and um you know 35 percent of all fungi uh, all medicine derives from fungi and penicillin is a strand of fungi 
So uh, they are the great uh, hidden warriors, I say, of the forest, merely because um, it's, it's, it, we want to make the unseen be seen. So it's really, what, an, an amazing thing is, is that because how healing these mushrooms have been for our community, they're, they're excited to learn more about fungi. And um, there's some great kind of source, resources, such as Fantastic Fungi, which anyone we take on uh, dirty, anyone who's interested in any capacity in, in mushrooms, that's our go-to. It's like, it's almost the Bible around fantastic fungi, uh, about fungi, sorry. And it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a documentary which is shot uh, beautifully by a guy by the name of Louis Schwartzberg, who has shot the whole experience of fungi in a time-lapse so beautifully well. And the narrative, I can't think of the lady's Hollywood actress's name, but she was Cats of America. And um, there's some great kind of mycologists such as Paul Stamets in there and other great um, pioneers of the world of fungi, which is really democratizing the, the, uh, the, um, the language and everything around uh, fungi and, uh, and mycelium, which is a whole other subject in itself, which is an infusion of a network that sits underneath our feet. And in one tea teaspoon of soil, there's up to about uh, 300 uh, kilometers of fungi in there. Uh, and fungi in itself. In one <laughs> yeah. teaspoon. One teaspoon. Gosh. So, so um, and fungi un underneath is, is is purely the network that is 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 connecting plants and trees. There's a, a there's something called mycorrhizal, and mycorrhizal is, is based on a, on a mushroom where it, it it basically becomes a conduit between plants and trees, um, and sharing in a very democratized uh, way um, both. Um, the sugars for the um, for the mushrooms and the plants and uh, the water and, and the nutrients that the trees need and it only happens based on having that mushroom that kind of interwines this mycelium and uh, yeah ninety percent of uh, of all uh, plants require mycorrhizal to for the forest to uh, to proliferate in, in all its glory um, so it's quite amazing the power of mushrooms sorry i'm going a slight uh, rabbit hole but um it's 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 quite amazing to understand uh what's going on beneath our feet i find it's incredible so fantastic fungi is is is, is a must and there's a book by a dear friend of ours called merlin sheldrake which is life entangled uh, uh which really uh, shows you the power of, of fungi both for us and the future um, well-being of our planet um and interestingly enough there's been five extinctions on this planet and we're going through the sick at the moment, if you look at scientific everything that's going through. And as much as uh, we may be the cause, we'd also be the victim. But for every extinction, fungi's we inherited the earth, which I think is incredible too. Sorry, say that again for I because it is slightly broke up. For every extinction, fungi has oh inherited the earth. Right. Once more. So um How interesting. Yeah, we, sh we should be praising these mushrooms. Um mm. so yeah, yeah. So it's it's a real education in itself. But so for my brother and I, it's like there's this planetary planetary anxiety that is very present at the moment and everyone's looking for a quick fix in some capacity our thing is just just steep into these mushrooms bring them into your lifestyle and, and you will see the transition from um from chronic fatigue to laser eyed focused um so getting the common cold to being fully um fully supportive and never having any of those bacterial inflammations again uh, based on uh, what these mushrooms can do yeah and they taste good too. Amazing. Uh, so where can people come and find you on Dirty World? Mm. Is that is that the best? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you're on social. I know you host these ceremonies. Please share so we can link to this and everything you've talked about really in the show notes. Yeah, sure. So um, the Instagram is Dirty World um, and DirtyWorld.com. And um, there is there's also Dirty Tribe. Uh, which I'd ask everyone to kind of tap into to see what we're doing in Serpentine Lake. If anyone wants to reach out and join us for Wild Lake Swimming, uh, always more than welcome. And uh, we're doing loads of different other uh, programs and experiences to really allow people to kind of go beyond what the conventional mind is aware of. So breathwork we were talking about before, which we I believe is the most powerful, and we've shown us the most powerful tool that we own. And we do this very deep, conscious, connected breathwork. And we get between... Um, 50 to 150 people coming each time because we create the most incredible it's globally renowned as one of the most amazing breathwork experiences because you're stepping into a sacred environment and it's it's so much fun we it's we have screens of mushrooms uh, in a very time-lapse kind of way we have uh down lighting littered with candles uh we have usually have a, a live composer in the middle and we all lay down and uh, it's an introduction into mushrooms my brother and I give. And then we have uh, a wonderful man by the name of Jamie Clements uh, who runs the breath space and uh, he leads the breath work. And 
what I can tell you, Angela, is that most people come are very pessimistic. They're like the, the perfect pessimist. They're people who just think nothing about the breath. What's breath going to do? And they're the ones who have this transition of um, getting rid of all this gunk and also uh, remarkably uh, the releases the anxiety. And a lot of them cry afterwards, and that's a great thing. And uh, they have profound experiences. And we always start off with our cacao and reishi to really calm the nervous system down and to really allow people to kind of uh, sleep into this experience um, very, in a very, um, in a present way. Um, and there's more things we're doing. There's something which was sharing before, there's a dirty weekends we're gonna be doing, which is um, it's the collaboration of, uh, in different estates actually around the UK and different areas abroad where we kind of combine some of the most amazing ancestral and modern therapeutic practices um, to improve mind and body. And it's a lot of fun. It's, it's not esoteric in any capacity at all. We have a lot of entertainment going on. Uh, at night, we go into the forest and we have a party. It's, it's really great. And it's, it's just personifying that one thing I feel has been missed for many years. Uh, COVID could be one of them is this idea of uh, community. So, um, and we, we're also, um, you may have seen, sorry, we have a partnership also with Stella McCartney. Um, and we have a big announcement next week. We're, um, we're sharing with everyone. Um, and um, it's just the idea of the more platforms we get like this. And I, I am incredibly thankful that you allow me to step onto your wonderful platform to share the story about mushrooms. Um, there's I'm a lot more to have you here, Simon. It's just like <laughs> <laughs> it's opening up a whole new world, I think, for people. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a real pleasure. Um, and I'd love to do a, um, a part two and uh, share a deeper research. And, and actually, interestingly enough, I should also bring my brother into this experience as well, because uh, I'm also speaking on his behalf, but it'd be a nice kind of collaboration. So you can um, ask him some questions as well. Yeah, very definitely. I'd absolutely love to do that. I know I'm conscious of your time today because I know you have yeah. something you're moving on to. So I'm really grateful for you coming on and sharing all that. And we will we will do stay tuned, guys, for a part two when we'll dive even deeper into uh, yeah. the dirty world. Um, but thank you so much, Simon. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you.